Hello, the weather's been really good today. Um, it, was, it was even sunny, it stopped raining. Um, so of course I had a shower and I got ready and I've come out and now it's drizzling again, which is really annoying. Um, I thought I'd do something a bit different today. Um, I'm going for a walk on a hill called Beach and Cliff um, and I'm going up to Alexandra Park. It's starting to rain quite a bit now. Um, <laughs> Yeah, this hill's to the south of the city of Bath um, and it's always been known as quite a beautiful place. Um, Jane Austen even mentioned it um, in her novel Northanger Abbey. Wow, it's really raining quite a lot now. Um, this is the view that's behind me. You can see just how steep the avenue actually is that I was walking up, so that's why I'm a bit out of breath. Um, <laughs> That over there is just the other side of Bath, lots of houses and things. Um, hopefully if I get to the top of this hill without being completely drenched then I'll be able to show you what the city of Bath looks like from up on Beach and Cliff. Here are some Edwardian houses. There's lots and lots of these. Um, you, you would have seen them earlier. There's just rows of terraces of them. Um, I can just hear the Abbey church bells now. I wonder if you can hear that. And you just get your first glimpse of Bath through the tree here, which I always find really exciting. So let's give you a little bit of a tour. Um, in the middle there, there's the Bath Abbey. Um, that was built in the 16th century and a couple of other abbeys were there in its place before that. Um, it's an Anglican church and it's also known as the Abbey Church of St. Peter and St. Paul. Um, it's in the, sh in the shape of a crucifix and when I go into town I'll take some proper footage of that. Oh, hello, I'm having some camera control issues. Right. We're quite lucky in Bath because um, our tourist attractions are really quite close together. So it's really nice to come and visit for a day. Uh, to the right of the Abbey, really close by, is the Empire Building, which is a hotel. And it was actually built as a hotel um, for someone called Alfred Holland. Um, it's got six stories and I believe it has five cellars but I know that at least two of them are completely flooded and the rest are used for storage and someone who works there told me that it's, it's not very nice to go and get stock from down there. It's quite creepy um, and underneath Bath there's a, a whole system of tunnels um, so you can get from any part of Bath to another part of Bath um, but it's all closed off to the public. Uh, the only time that you get to go under the ground level is when you go to the Roman Baths um, and that's the the level that Bath was before it was built up on. Um, the reason that they built it up was actually because it was so marshy that it just kept flooding all the time. Um, so the reason that the Empire Building is interesting is because it's really rare because it's got three different types of house like on the roof. Um, to the right there, you've got uh, the castle corner, which is meant to show the upper class. Um, in the middle, there's the house, um, and that's for the middle class. And to the left there, that's a cottage roof, and that's to represent the lower classes. Um, and it's basically trying to illustrate that all types of um, people are allowed to come to the hotel and they're welcomed, even though I believe it was quite a prestigious place to go and it was quite expensive. Um, it's in a prime location in Bath. You can't see that from here because uh, there's buildings in the way. But where the trees are, just there, um, there's a really nice park and there's a weir called Pulteney Weir. You may have heard of Pulteney Bridge, which is famous, which I'll show you another time too. Um, then we've got lots of hills around Bath. It's called the Bath Skyline and it's a green belt, which means that nobody's legally allowed to build on it. So it just makes sure that the city sort of can't develop, but on the plus side um, you get to keep all that lush green countryside all around there. And when you're in the middle, even though it's built up, you always feel like you're so close to the country because you always look up and you know you can you feel like you can get a breath of fresh air. Even though funnily enough Bath is the most polluted place in the UK because it's like a little basin if you have a look all the pollution just gets stuck right down in the, in the bottom of the valley. Um, most of the hills are wooded, um, they have trees on them, except for Salisbury Hill right over there. Let's try and have a look at that. There we go. Um, 
And the reason it's flat is because it had an Iron Age hill fort on the top of it. Um, it was made out of wood, so that's all gone now. It's all rotted away. And um, you may have heard of Peter Gabriel, who's a musician, and he's, he sung a song called Salisbury Hill, and it's actually about that hill. Um, it's, it's near Bath Easton, which is a sort of suburb of Bath, um, and it's part of the Cotswolds area of outstanding natural beauty, which isn't too far from Bath. Um, and that means it gets lots of protection, no one would ever be able to build on it and stuff like that. Um, the song was written in 1977 and people still love it now um, and lots of people don't really know that it's, it's based on that hill so there we go. Right, you can see the Royal Crescent which is just over there um, and that's a really famous bit of architecture people go to. Um, it's in Victoria Park it's a massive park and there's a big golf course behind it um, and it's basically lots and lots of posh terrace houses in the shape of a crescent um, and it's all cobbled in front of it and if you, if you walk in front of it you'll notice people have chandeliers and they're not allowed to have different curtains they all have to have white ones um, because they like showing off basically um, down here which is a bit I didn't really want to show you but it seems to be sort of becoming Bath's most famous point at the moment. Southgate shopping development. Um, they tried to build them out of the same materials, um, but they look so obviously different if you have a look. Bath was at risk of losing its national heritage status because they've just been building all these new monstrous buildings. Um, there's lots of shops down there, they wanted to do it to promote tourism and to be honest there were, were horrible cement like concrete buildings and stuff um, but there were some really nice buildings as well um, like Churchill House that really nice house that was overlooking the river has now been replaced by this monstrous bus station which they thought would look modern and lovely it doesn't fit in with the city at all and most of the doors were already broken and they only built it like a couple of years ago or something um, the reason that that part of Bath is called Southgate is because Bath used to be tiny and there was a little wall around it and there were four gates on it um, and that that's where the South Gate was which was the main entrance into Bath if you like um, and yeah Bath's grown a hell of a lot now but it can't really expand much further because it's it's so sort of jam-packed full of buildings that there's nowhere for them to go anymore that's the railway line. It's lots of nice little churches and things. Over there, that's the cricket club. There's the high street. All the way up there, you can see the little people walking. It sort of takes a little turn. And that's the top of town, really. That's where the shops end. So it's a really small town. That's it. That's the high street. <laughs> I'm going to stay here for a bit longer even though it's raining quite a lot and I've not got my umbrella up um, just to show you what it looks like with all the lights on when it's dark oh dear I seem to have found myself in a bit of a monsoon so I'm crouching on the ground and being rained on a hell of a lot check that out ah, I've just noticed the smell of that um, in case you didn't know those are called ramsons and um, their common name really is wild garlic and you can eat the leaves, they're really really tasty um, they taste a lot like chives, you know the herb it's finally dark here so you, you can see what it looks like that was just a bat that flew down all the dazzling lights it's just so beautiful, it's such a nice place to come and think um, I mentioned Jane Austen writing about Beach and Cliff which is where I'm standing now um, and it's strange that she describes what the cliff looks like but not the view from it. Um, she says, They determined on walking round beach and cliff, ne that noble hill whose beautiful verdure and hanging coppice render it so striking an object from almost every opening in Bath. And it's true, you can see it from Bath, but just being up here is something else. And even though you're overlooking the city you feel like you're in a tranquil place and you're far enough to just get some headspace. Bye, bye.
spite of all the night.